So I've made a couple of really introductory videos about the Cute Browser in the past, just introducing you guys to what the Cute Browser is. I haven't really gone deep into configuring the Cute Browser before, and I've gotten a ton of questions and people wanting to know how to do this and how to do that. So today I thought I would dive a little bit into my Cute Browser configuration file and show you guys some things that I recommend all of you do after installing the Cute Browser, some things that if you set I think it'll make your lives a little easier and hopefully it will answer some of the questions that I've been getting about Cute Browser. So the first thing I suggest everyone do is create a config.py. So by default, the configuration file for Cute Browser is autoconfig.yaml. Let me launch a graphical file manager here. I'm going to launch pcmanfm. And in your home directory, go to .config slash Cute Browser and you should see this file here. I think it's automatically generated when you first install and launch a cute browser, autoconfig.yml. So that is your standard config file, but if you convert that over to a Python script, because cute browser is configurable through Python, you convert that into a config.py, and then it gives you a more powerful config file that's got a lot more options. You can do a lot more with that. And you don't have to necessarily generate that config.py file by hand. You know, you can actually just have it auto generated for you within cute browser itself. So in command mode in cute browser, so do colon and then do this command. I believe it's config dash write dash pi. Yeah, that's the command config dash write dash pi. And that writes our current configuration, our current auto config.yaml, it converts that over to this Python script, the config.py. And then once you have that config.py, again, you can do a lot more with your configuration. Uh, the first thing I think you should do after creating the config.py is get rid of this blinding white light that's coming from the DuckDuckGo homepage here, right? So we need, really need a dark mode here because, man, that is just really, really bright. So let me close the cute browser and I'm going to open up Emacs because I'm going to open up my config.py in Emacs. So let me search for my cute browser config. And let me go to the top of this document here. Now, this document, by the way, is very lengthy because most of it is comments. And these comments were placed here automatically when I generated my config.py with the command config-write-py. I just left the, all the comments in the document, though, just in case I ever needed to come back and figure something out. I thought that the comments would be helpful. But if you don't like having you know, so many commented lines in your config.py, you could delete them just to clean up the config a little bit but I left mine now what you need to do is you need to well first let me zoom in here so you can see this and then you need to add this line here this is what I added to get the uh, dark mode and this is not something that was already in this I had to add this myself I had to add this command here config dot set and then within parentheses uh, double quote colors.webpage.darkmode.enabled in double quotes and then comma space true. So we're setting dark mode enabled to be true. And let me do a colon W here in Doomy Max to write. And now let me switch to an empty desktop. I'm going to relaunch Cute Browser. And now we have a really nice dark mode going on within DuckDuckGo. Let me check out some other websites because dark mode won't work for every website out there, but it'll work for most. So if I do O for open, and then in my case, YT, I have as a quick mark for YouTube. So that's my uh, homepage for my YouTube channel. You see YouTube has a very nice dark mode with that. So that's one of the most common questions I had about Cute Browser was, hey, how do I get dark mode? I, I, I personally am not a big user of dark mode. I could take it or leave it, but I know for a lot of people, dark mode is kind of a deal breaker. So really just add that one line to your config.py and you should be set. Other than dark mode, I think the next most common question people ask me about Cute Browser is ad blocking. Well, there is some ad blocking built into Cute Browser, but it, it's not good. And by default, Cute Browser really doesn't have a plugin system, so you can't go grab uBlock Origin or anything like that. It, it's not built that way. But it does have a built in ad blocker. Again, it's not great, but if you run this command, so in command mode, so type colon and then ad block, well, then just tab complete, and the command is ad block dash update. Run that command, and you will see. 
it read 56,000 source files or something. Anyway, it creates this list of, I guess, things to block. And uh, that's it. it. It enables adblock automatically after you run adblock-update. But it doesn't work on every site. And the one site it really doesn't work on and that really frustrates people is YouTube. So we are on YouTube right now. So if I clicked on one of my videos, uh, an ad would probably play. This one that I just published the other day. Let me see. Yeah, you say an ad's going to play. And there's really no way around that. Well, I say there's no way around that. Here's the way I get around it. So let me switch back over to Doom Emacs here. So uh, in my config.py, let me go to the bottom of this document because at the bottom I have some custom key bindings I created. And you will see I have two very important key bindings for those of you that watch YouTube. I have config.bind and then capital M for hint links spawn mpv hint URL. So if I do a capital M on a YouTube page, and it's going to ask me what link do I want to open and I pick the link I want to open it opens that in MPV the video player MPV uh, if you don't have MPV installed then you know choose another video player for that to run in or just install MPV I also have config.bind capital Z and it runs the command hint links spawn st a terminal and then it runs this command in the terminal, YouTube-DL, for YouTube download, <laughs> and then that URL. Let me show you these in action, so let me get back over here. So remember, uh, capital Z was the command for YouTube download, so all I need to do is Shift-Z. And then you see all the links on the page are now have letters out to the side of them. I need to choose what link that I'm trying to open using the ST terminal and YouTube-DL inside the ST terminal. And the one I want to do is that one that I just had in this video. It's LD. So let me do LD. My ST terminal opens up and it's going to run the YouTube-DL. I don't actually need to let that run, but it would have just downloaded that file. Once I download that file, it's on my system. I can open it up in any video player I want to. If I just want to uh, stream directly from MPV instead of Shift Z for the YouTube-DL link, I could do Shift M, capital M. And I get the same thing. I get a bunch of hints here for the links, and this time the link is KD. So KD. You guys are not seeing it because it's on a different monitor. So let me move that to the desktop you guys are on. This started playing on a, another monitor here. But it opened that link up just fine in MPV. And that's what I would do. I wouldn't even bother trying to block the ads on YouTube and Cute Browser. It's not going to work. Just get used to using tools like YouTube-DL if you want to physically download a copy to your computer or if you just want to watch something. Just... Open it in MPV, and it's really easy to create that key binding. Again, this is not a difficult key binding to add here. One other neat thing I like to bind is hiding the status bar, hiding the tabs, and hiding both the status bar and the tabs. So if I go back to the desktop with Cube Browser, I had XB for the status bar. So if I type XB, the status bar at the bottom went away. Did you guys see that? Let me hit XB again. And now it's back. XB, it goes away. And remember, I had that here uh, for XB, and the command was config dash cycle status bar dot show space always space never. And then XT toggles the tabs. So if I go back and instead of XB, I hit XT, the tabs at the top go away. And XT brings the tab bar back. And if I wanted to, let me bring the status bar back up with XB, but I also had that other key binding XX, which runs a combination of these commands. It toggles both the status bar and the tabs. So if I do XX, both the status bar and the tabs go away, and I have a perfectly clean browser window with no distractions at all. No status bar, no tabs, you know, nothing. So we really don't get any distractions here until I run a command using colon or some other keyboard command that opens up maybe a, a URL bar or search bar or something like that. For example, if I did, oh, right now, 
you know, I would get a list of my search engines that I have configured in my config.py, a list of the quick marks I have saved. These are pages I go to all the time, so I have them quick marked. You know, that stuff comes up. By the way, these are all customizable as far as the colors and everything. Same thing with the uh, tab colors and the status bar colors. You can configure all of that. So if I go back into config.py, you know, you see a very lengthy list of settings that you can do as far as colors, such as colors, completion, foreground, colors, completion, odd background, colors, completion, even background, because you do have some odd, even colors you can play with, such as the odd and even colors here in this list of quick marks and this list of search engines. And one of the cool things about Cute browser is the ability to set up a quick mark. So if I just type O for open and then whatever two or three letter combination I have for a quick mark. So I know my start page for Cute browser is OSP. So if I do OSP for start page and hit enter, this is my custom start page that I created mainly for use within the Cute browser and within the surf browser because I wanted a fancy uh, start page for those particular browsers. But anyway, this was just a quick video showing you guys a little bit of what I've done with the Cute Browser and showing you guys a little bit as far as the configuration. So what I would do is I strongly suggest, again, just a very brief recap, create a config.py because that gives you a better config file to work with and then enable dark mode, run the add block dash update command to get your ad block enabled and updated. Realize that Adblock is not going to work on YouTube, so if you watch a lot of YouTube, go ahead and create some kind of link for MPV to open up your video links. And really at that point, I think Cute Browser is pretty squared away. I think it competes pretty well with the big browsers, Firefox and Chromium and things like that. And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, Cute Browser can't do you know, these 10,000 other things that a big, heavy, bloated browser like Firefox or Chrome can do. Well, yes, but the whole point of Cute Browser not having all of that bloat is that Cute Browser is not a bloated browser. And for somebody like me, I really appreciate that. Now, if you guys need a bazillion plugins and everything, I understand Cute Browser is probably not for you. For those of you looking for a different kind of browser experience, a more minimal, cleaner experience, especially people that like Vim key bindings, especially because the Cute Browser is all keyboard driven and it uses Vim like key bindings. It really is the perfect browser. And before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank Michael, Gabe, Corbinian, Mitchell, Devin, Fran, Arch5530, Akami, Chuck, Claudio, Donnie, Dylan, George, Greg, Kell of Devils, Lewis, Paul, Scott, and Willie. They are the producers of the show. They are my highest tier patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode about things to do after installing the Cute Browser wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because this channel has no corporate sponsors. This show is sponsored by you guys, the community. If you'd like to support my work, look for DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.